I don't know if you guys are familiar with Alan McCloyd. Uh, he is a writer for Mint Press News. Highly recommend his work. It is fantastic. He is a he is a, uh, a a a really a really great um, really great journalist. Uh, I really like the work that he does. But on Twitter, I've seen him do this several times. <laughs> He's just a media watchdog, man. Like, he just calls out fucking corporate media on their bullshit. And it's kind of hilarious. It's kind of awesome. Like, I love that he has this knowledge of, like, hey, five years ago, you pulled this fucking article, and it's the complete opposite of what you're saying now. In fact, you reference that article and then completely debunk and, like, debunk it yourself and completely ignore it. Like, <laughs> you know, like, he just points out the fucking mental gymnastic a lot of these journalists do. It is very funny to me. Um, so I saw this on Twitter, and uh, I'll preface by saying the Guardian changed their um, their their title to this article. So this is from the archives, right? Uh, he he shared the archive, uh, and I'll pull it up here so you guys can see the title of this article because it's fucking ridiculous. It says child labor doesn't have to be exploitation it gave me life skills uh and this is from global development global development is supported by the bill and melinda gates foundation uh so I, at least they're being upfront about where their money is coming from right so you can at least like learn uh like how how much of corporate shields they really are <laughs> so that's the title that they originally put on the uh on the article They have since changed it to something uh, slightly, slightly less cringy and offensive and awful. Slightly, yeah. uh, but I decided to keep this because it's important to know what the fucking original article says. So it's written by this woman that um, grew up in Africa, and she, you know, the article talks about how. Uh, it, it basically equates like chores, like what you have to do around the house, what you have to do for your family and, and homes and things of that sort. Uh, and it equates that with child labor. It, it equates that with children having to work uh, in their family business. Right. And in Africa, at this, at this point, uh, the cash crop is tobacco um, and agriculture. Those are the big those are the big industries. Right. And. And the way they phrase they, they frame it is. You know, uh, these kids, they have to help their family. Their family needs to make end meet, ends meet, you know, and they have this farm and they have to do the work. So the kids have to they have to work and they have to do the chores. And, it, it you know, and, and to, according to this woman, it, it gave her life skills. And now I understand that. I can understand how you can say like, oh, having a job at, as a kid can teach you responsibility and so on and so forth. Right. I had a job when I was 14 years old. I told everybody that asked me how old I was, I said I was 16 uh, because even even then I was like, this is technically child labor and I uh, don't want to fucking get these people in trouble. But here's here's the issue, right? Like some of the chores they talk about is like carrying a two liter uh, bucket of water three kilometers back to the house so that they have you know a source of water uh for for them for the for the for the home so and i understand you have to do that um and to put this in american context so americans kind of have a framework of of what this is uh first of all in england they spell labor with a u that's why you see that on guardian <laughs> i know you guys know that i'm being i'm being a jackass um but uh, this would be like Bob's Burgers. If you guys are familiar with the with the television program Bob's Burgers, uh, I am a big fan of that show. Not that that show is perfect. In fact, my my housemate Sarah and I were talking about how, um, well, she pointed this out where she was like a majority of the cast members are male, and I dug around and I found out that that is something that they have been called out on. Uh, they apologize and they're like, hey, we're going to hire more female actors and female writers. And and then they did. So like the later seasons have 
uh, more the the storylines are are are, are um, uh, involve more of the supporting character cast, and the supporting cast has um, you know females doing the voices and so on and so forth. So so they they do take things to heart. Is it a perfect show? It, you know what show is? Uh, but it is a, it is a good show. But in Bob's Burgers, uh, Bob Belcher's kids, Bob and Tina Belcher's kids are not Tina Belcher, Linda Belcher. Um, they work in the restaurant. They are employees of Bob's Burgers. And, uh, you know, I'll get to why this is, why why technically what Bob is doing is not child labor uh, and why what's happening in Africa would constitute as that. And I want to say that all of the things that are happening in Africa where the kids have to work on the farms and so on and so forth is not a consequence of African culture. It's not like the people are, of Africa were like, you know what? Fuck kids. All right. They got to earn their keep. They got to do the jobs and fucking pull themselves up by their, their tiny little bootstraps and, 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 and really fucking learn what it means to, to, to work a day, to have sweat on their brow, right? It's not, no, it's because of capitalism and imperialism. Africa was uh, unfortunately uh, one of the victims of European imperialism. And because of European imperialism, uh, a, a lot of its economy is still struggling. you left it open for warlords warlords to take over so a lot of the strife in africa is manufactured because of european imperialism so european imperialism really should be picking up the weight here <laughs> european imperialism needs to pull itself up by its bootstraps and fucking help out the people that it's fucked over so should does american imperialism they both need to do that but um Here's what child labor is defined as. So, so here, here's why what's happening in Africa as a consequence of European imperialism constitutes more as child labor than what Bob Belcher is doing uh, on on Bob's Burgers. This isn't me saying like, oh, Bob's Bob's Burgers is better than fucking Afri Africa or whatever. That's what a crazy statement that would be to make. Uh, but child labor is defined as work that deprives children of their childhood, takes away their potential, their dignity, and is mentally and physically harmful. Um, so the way this woman is presenting it, she is saying that doing this stuff gave her life skills. That's that's the argument that she's making here. Um, but clearly, like, I don't know if she got a formal education. She doesn't go into that. It doesn't sound like she did. It sounds like she had to work on the farm all the time. Uh, it sounds like it was really, really difficult. Right? The The question should be whether these kids are getting an education. Right? Do they have time to play? Or do, they, do they get playtime? You know, do they get to go out and kick the ball around? Play with their toys? What have you? Do they have a choice to become anything other than the, the family business, right? Like, because because the lineage needs to keep going, because the economy of Africa is, is correlated to uh, fucking agriculture, and they're, and they're exporting this agriculture to primarily white countries, do they have a choice of becoming anything other than that? Or do they have to keep with the family, family work? I would say no, unfortunately. And I'm going to get into the solution, like what I think about this and stuff. I, I don't think these kids have much of a choice. I, I think this woman got out um, and, and became something different. So I would say that she's probably not in the majority because I think we would hear this perspective a whole lot more. If kids in Africa that grew up working on farms since you know, they were a, 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 a ye old babe. We would hear this perspective a lot more, but we don't because a majority of the kids probably end up taking over their parents' farms and working in the field. And that's what they know. Do they get a formal education? I, I don't know. I, my Again, my conjecture would be no. If they're working on a farm all the time, when do they get time to learn and read and 
you know, do all that kind of stuff. They, 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 they don't. That's the harsh reality of it. And again, that is a consequence of imperialism and capitalism. If these European nations, because of how important some of these crops are, that these, these African farmers are, are, are growing, why not pay them more? Right. If this is the problem that they can recognize, I mean, The Guardian is a pretty prominent paper that has essentially put this problem out into the world. If this is that prominent of a problem, why would they not help these people? Why would they not say, you know what, we're going to pay a little bit more. We're going to put a thing that says uh, that, that, that says uh, the, the cost of African agriculture is going to go up a little bit. And it's a good thing because we're going to uh, uh, uplift the, the nations of Africa. After we fuck them over. And 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 equalize some things. The Belcher kids, because they are in America, <clears throat> and fortunately America has child labor laws, do not uh, fall into the category of child labor because they get to go to school. They get to go hang out with their friends. They and they get to make a decision for themselves. There's there's multiple episodes where they've talked about how. Um, I, and obviously this is a fictional character. I, 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 I know kids that have like worked within their, within their family businesses and, and, and such as in America as well. But again, they get to go to school. They get to have a life with their friend. Like, obviously I was friends with them. So I know that they didn't work at the restaurant or, 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 or their family business or what have you all the time. The parents took on that burden. And if the kids wanted to pick up, they they could, they had the option to, but it was not a necessity for them to do so. Here's, here's where this, this article starts getting a little fucked up for me. So there's a Gandhi quote. Let's pull up the Gandhi quote in here. Uh, she writes, Mahatma Gandhi forged the way for Indian independence. The father of his nation knew a thing or two about self-reliance. Quote, our children should not be taught as to uh, taught as to despise labor, he wrote in a weekly journal in 1921. There is no reason why a peasant's son, after having gone to school, should become a become useless as he does become as an agricultural laborer. <clears throat> that second part of the sentence, I've read that, I don't know, eight or nine times. It, it still doesn't particularly make sense to me. I guess I guess he's making the point that if you go to school and study something, you you shouldn't do something that doesn't pertain to what you studied. Um, but he is also calling like an agricultural laborer useless, I think. Or I don't I don't know if I'm, I'm misreading that. I'll I'll read that last sentence for you guys one more time, and you can tell me if I'm fucking up real hard on the interpretation of it. It reads, there is no reason why a peasant's son, after having gone to school, should become useless as he does become as an agricultural laborer. It's it's phrased weird, right? Now, here's here's the thing. It talks about how we shouldn't teach kids to despise labor, how we shouldn't teach kids to, to despise work, right? And that's fine. I I agree with that. I don't I don't think we should be discouraging people to 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 work. But what this is missing, um, is why we're not talking about despising work, but we're talking about people. People should know that they should be fairly compensated for the work that they do. And this quote doesn't address that. It just says, "Hey, we, we you should work. That's something that you should do." Yeah, but for what? If you have a job that you don't like, if you have a job that doesn't somewhat bring you satisfaction or fulfillment in your life, then you're not going to be good at that job because you just don't give a fuck. My ex-wife used to complain about um, how people are incompetent, you know, when she goes to certain places. A running theme, gas stations and coffee shops and so on and so forth. Uh, and the argument was always like, well, some people should, th th uh, that was her justification, I guess, for being like, oh, we should give people a universal basic income because those people shouldn't be doing these jobs. 
to me, it was it was more of an argument of, yes, we should give people universal basic income, but not because we should get these people out of the workforce. It's because we should be encouraging these people to do something they're passionate about. Right. The reason why you get shitty service is because the people behind the counter don't fucking care and they get treated like shit all the time and they get paid like shit. So why would they give 100 percent of their effort for what they feel like is 10 percent of their pay and respect? So to me, Gandhi has it wrong in this in this sense. We shouldn't teach people to despise labor, but we should it it. In conjunction with that, we should also teach people that the work they do should be valued. They should value themselves as the working class and they should feel empowered as the working class. And if they are not being compensated, if they're not being treated fairly, if they're not being treated with respect, then they should demand that. Because it's very different to hate working and hate where you're working and hate what the work is. That's not laziness. That's just realizing that there's no fulfillment in what you're doing. You shouldn't just do any job. Having to do any job fucking sucks because that any job can be soul sucking. And I'm speaking from experience here. We need to start valuing joy and valuing passion. And saying that is an okay way to make a living. But we don't because we we only look at work. I mean, we have a really fucked up relationship with work, especially in Western society. So, but but that's the missing element to me in all this. Where's the respect to the worker? All that statement still gives more power to the bosses. It that statement in this context, especially is reiterating that same narrative we keep hearing. Nobody wants to work. Nobody wants to work. That's what we keep hearing, right? Oh, they all want to stay home. So now what Joe Biden is doing is saying, hey, if you're offered a job and you decline to take it, we're going to cut your unemployment. What kind of authoritarian bullshit is that? You're going to cut people's services that they need because they're, they got offered a job at half the pay? Why would anybody get off of unemployment if they if they're not able to fucking make ends meet if they're not able to take care of their basic needs through their work? Yet he won't increase the fed, uh, the the minimum wage, which he can through an executive order. That is something that he can do. He has that power. He only did it for federal, and that I think even is is slightly incremental. This is the second part of it that I want to I want to get to here. Ba, 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 ba. Where are we at? I think I scrolled right past it. Did I scroll right? Yeah, okay, here we go. There it is. Sorry, took me a second to find it. Uh she goes on to say, child labor is not new. To varying extents, it's existed throughout history. In 19th century Britain, Victorian factories and mines exploited children on a massive scale. So did American mines. Uh, indeed, it is a worldwide problem, not just during industrialization, but throughout the last century. Today, contrary to popular belief, most child laborers are employed by their parents rather than in manufacturing or the formal economy. I'm not sure how much of that is actually true. Um, yeah. Because China, Bangladesh, uh, Nepal, there's a lot of those kind of countries that don't have child labor laws where kids do work in the factories. Kids do work in manufacturing. So I'm not sure how much of that statement is actually true. Uh, she goes on to say, in Africa, where many areas have no social security, no social services to support the vulnerable, families are responsible for educating and training the next generation to become capable adults, which means that these kids don't get to go through an education, uh, go through formal education. And, you know, it's, I'm not saying they're dumb because they're not. I don't know anything about agriculture. They do. I don't know anything about fucking raising cattle. They do. That's not a lack of intellect. It's a very specific form of intellect. But she just kind of proved how the, how what what is happening in Africa is still technically part of child labor. And again, it is not because Africa wants kids to work. It's because 
imperialism and capitalism, but fucking centuries of it has created a system where social services don't exist, where these countries are 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 so in destitute or you know or 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 still being fucked with by European imperialism or have a warlord in charge that they can't get these services. So these kids are forced to work with their because because maybe they can't afford an employee. And instead of that being the goal, it it, it goes into the it goes into self reliance, which is which is what she's going to do. So those with good life skills become self reliant and resilient because they can support themselves against all odds. There's an African proverb: "By crawling, a child learns to stand." Without these life skills, the young adult is the laughing stock of the community, dependent on others for food, clothing, and even shelter. Isn't that what a fucking job is? And if you're employed by somebody else, isn't uh, it's that exactly what you're doing? I'm getting very animated and I hit my mic and I'm sorry if it popped. Without these life skills, the young adult is laughing stock of the community, dependent on others for food, clothing, and even shelter. That's what bosses do. You just described how capitalism works. These farmers are dependent on the fucking white Anglo-Saxon countries that buy their agriculture. And they've decided that their agriculture from Africa is worth a certain amount, which is probably not enough for these farmers to feed themselves. You fucking just described capitalism. And you're saying that without these without these kids working in these farms, they're not going to be self-reliant. I didn't I didn't I know we started when I was 14 years old, but I wasn't fucking five years old working on a farm. And I think I'm pretty fucking self-reliant. My family used to, you know, we used to do chores. We used to get an allowance. I used to get $2 a week, and my sister used to get $4 a week, and we had specific chores that we had to complete throughout the week. If we didn't, or if they weren't up to my mother's satisfaction, then we do not get an allowance. That taught me the value of work, and that taught me the value of money when I was a very small child. I'm talking about nine years old. The theme here is self-reliance. The theme here is self-reliance. There's this whole article. They're like, yeah, we need we need these kids to work in these farms because we need them to be fucking self-reliant. But still work for the capitalists. Again, got to do some mental gymnastics here. This is basically them saying, pull yourself up by your bootstraps, Africa. Why can't you get it together? Because capitalism and imperialism fucked their country up. Imperialism wrecked Cap uh, Africa, and instead of saying, we can do better, and we can help this country out, and not having that be a bad thing. That's the other thing is being dependent on others is not a bad thing. It's not a sign of weakness to ask for help. And capitalism fucking burns that into your fucking head. That if you ask for help, you're weak. And you're not. You know why? Because you just proved that you're stronger than what you think. You just proved that there's probably 150 people willing to help you in any which way that they possibly can. This notion of self-reliance is used as a way to cut social services here and to justify cutting those social services and to justify saying, we don't need to improve, increase a minimum wage because you need to learn how to be self-reliant. That's a bullshit. This is the last thing I'm going to say on this topic. It is okay to ask for help, especially when you need it. Let's look at your comments. <laughs> Miguel, big fan of Bob's Burgers as well. Uh, the there we go. Okay. Randomly cut my camera. <laughs> Uh, Holly says Bob's White Castle. Are you referencing to the White Castle story I said earlier? 
uh, last week, I'm assuming. Um, yeah, the Protestant work ethic. Yeah, it, it's it's interesting that it, that a Hindu man is is describing Protestant work ethic, but it kind of also shows you like where someone like Gandhi was, you know, as 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 much of an advocate for for um, India's freedom as he was, he was still he was still on the capitalist side of things, you know. So again, um, cynical girl says you're missing the commas. I'm missing the commas, or or Gandhi was missing the commas. Uh, Holly says we need a, a living wage. We need some respect for the working class. Uh, Seneca Girl says, "Crazy me! I want to have a roof over my head and eat at the same time." See, you got it. You're asking too much as it is. What you're basically asking for the moon? Okay, ridiculousness, forced poverty and servitude. Yeah, exactly. And that's that's kind of that's kind of what what they're talking about here is they're they're justifying it and they're saying it's it's totally okay uh let's let's go to a friend over here says easy to get frenzied when the topic inspires passionate condemnation <laughs> yes it does fred i you, you are you are absolutely correct you are absolutely correct uh cool Thank you guys so much for tuning into this video. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure you hit the like button and please make sure you share this content out. Sharing is very important. Sharing is how independent media gets the word out there about topics that corporate media doesn't even want to mention on their networks. So it's really up to you guys. Corporate media very much depends on the people. We are people powered media. That's what we really are. Uh, another great way to help if you're on stable financial ground is to uh, make a financial contribution to this channel. And you can do so over at krishmohanhaha.com slash donate. You can become a sustaining member, which gets you free tickets, early access to videos, bonus stand-up comedy and storytelling content, uh, a way for you to communicate directly with me, ask me questions, and other uh, premium content that uh, will be released on a monthly basis. Um, or you can make a one-time donation as well on that same website. Um, I also have uh, various stand-up comedy albums. I have about six comedy albums out right now uh, that are available on my website at krishmohanhaha.com. And most of them, if you get them off of Bandcamp, are available for a dollar or a, a pay-what-you-want pricing. And I also want to mention that I do have an online merch store. Uh, you can go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com, click on the merch tab, and check out all of the designs that I've made myself. And the Julian Assange shirt, there is a Julian Assange shirt that's on the website. All the profit from the Julian Assange designs will be going to uh, pro-Assange activists, such as Action for Assange, uh, Kevin Gastola, Richard Methurst, folks uh, 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 that, that are covering and talking about Assange. So I'm going to be making donations to them um, uh, it'll be 100% of the profits I make off of that shirt. Uh, thank you again for tuning in. Thank you again to all the people that have made contributions to the show, that regularly check out my content, that have subscribed to my channels. I, I very, very much appreciate it. And uh, and you guys help keep this uh, keep keep this this train a moving. So I, I very much appreciate that. Until the next video, we'll see you on the road. See you guys.